Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining this evening's Learning and Culture Scrutiny Committee. Uh, the date and time is Thursday, 11th of February, 2021, and it's five o'clock. Um, I'd just like quickly to um, remind everyone that uh, this meeting will be recorded and the, this copy will be archived for future viewing. Uh, could all participants mute themselves? We're not speaking in any order to, to avoid any background noise or feedback when other participants are speaking. If any participant wishes to speak, they can put their hand up, uh, wave on screen, I'm sure I'll catch you, or use the uh, hands up uh, feature on MS Teams. Um, if you have any issues with hearing or being heard uh, when you're addressing the committee, then you should let the chairman, i.e. me, or a democratic officer, um, let us know. Um, if you have a webcam, then you should try turning it off first, and th as this may help with broadband or Wi-Fi bandwidth. Um, so therefore, then at least you can speak. Um, and then uh, finally, thank you everyone for joining this um, evening. So uh, agenda item number one, apologies for absence. Uh, Democratic Services have had apologies from Councillor Andrew Parker and from Dr Martin Price. OK, thank you very much. Um, on to agenda item number two, uh, the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of January 2021. Um, are we happy to move it? Does anyone have anything they would like to raise? Uh, Councillor Jarvie? Yeah, it? thank you. No, I'm happy to, to move those, Chairman. Um, Councillor Parker, in sending his apologies, did ask me if he would pass on to you his appreciation of the letter of condolence that he received from you on behalf of the committee. That's all, really. Thank you very much, Councillor Jarvey. Um, and thank you, Councillor Thomas, as well, for um, suggesting it back in the last meeting. Um, thank you. So I had uh, Councillor Thomas, I uh, believe he's happy to um, propose it. Any seconder? Hunter, sec Hunter moved, I'm seconding. OK, brilliant. Thank you very much. OK, we can move on, on to agenda item number three, which is to receive declarations of interest. Do we have anything? I believe that is a no. OK, brilliant. Thank you very much. And now we can move on to um, agenda item four, which is a reference from Cabinet, which is to do with the review of statues, monuments, street names and building names. Uh, this is the review panel terms of reference, which um, has come from Cabinet, which was on the 25th of January. Tom, are you going to give us an overview of this? I will do, yes. Thank you, Thank Chair. You. Good evening, um, committee. Thanks very much for, for taking this reference. As, um, as the Chair said, um, this is a, a reference from Cabinet. You'll remember from um, last month's meeting, we brought a report that was again a reference from Cabinet, setting out the work to review um, street names, um, building names, monuments and statues, and there was a really good discussion at the committee last month. I mentioned there that um, Cabinet had requested a terms of reference for the review panel to be developed and reported to Cabinet before the work started. So that's the report that you've got on the agenda this evening. Um, Cabinet saw the, um, the report, as you said, um, in January and have referred it here for any views of the committee. Um, the report is relatively brief. Um, it gives a little bit of background in terms of the, the purpose that we covered last month in terms of the review itself. Um, but the main thrust of the report is around how the panel is going to work. So in the appendix to the Cabinet Report Appendix A, you've got the review panel's terms of reference. Um, it sets out the purpose and role of the panel, which um, is to undertake that, that review that we discussed at last month's meeting. And then it goes into just a little bit more detail in terms of the membership, so the composition of, of, of the panel and where that's drawn from. Um, it also talks about the accountability of the panel, um, which is to make recommendations to the Council's Cabinet for consideration, and Cabinet um, have agreed that um, those recommendations considered by Cabinet would be referred to Scrutiny Committee here um, as part of that decision-making process that I described last month. Um, it talks about the working methods that the panel will adopt, um, so therefore, um, as we talked about last um, time, receiving uh, representatives 
representations from town and community councils and those have started to come in. There will also be a general call for um, any representations from members of the public um, via social media and that um, we would then take those um, representations to the panel for consideration. The panel will also review the findings of the work that's been undertaken by the Welsh Government, which is specifically looked at um, links to um, the black community as part of its work. Um, and then um, it talks about some of the administration elements of the, the panel's work as well. Um, talks about the fact that um, we'll be convening an initial meeting in February. So um, we wanted to bring this reference to you um, first, um, and then we'll be convening that, um, that panel meeting. That will initially talk about the scope and the housekeeping, and then we'd look to do some substantive business um, in March of next, um, sorry, in, in March next month. Um, we then look to establish further meetings of the panel as required. Um, it talks about the fact that obviously we'll continue to use uh, Microsoft Teams while we can't be in person. And finally, the terms of reference makes um, reference to the fact that um, Cabinet will review how the um, the review is going in June of, of 2021 to take a decision as to whether it needs to continue or whether the work has concluded. So that's a very quick overview um, for you, Chair. OK, thank you very much, Tom. Um, would anyone like to ask any questions or comments regarding on the terms reference? First, Councillor Tom, moving on to Councillor Kemp. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, can I just ask two, two questions? Um, there's the reference made to receiving representations from town and community councils. Now, I've, I've, I've well, I, I normally attend um, online at the meetings of Clancarvan Community Council, and I can't, I'll be honest, I can't recall this coming on up on their agenda. I'm assuming something's been sent to them, but I'm just wondering if for any reason there's been a problem, would um, the, the this um, this body accept uh, late representations from a community council? Do you want me to respond to that one, Chair? Well, I was the, the second point I was going to, the second point, I'll, I'll make the second point as well, um, is the reference to um, a membership from a history society has that been determined yet which uh, history society that will be okay th thank you councillor kemp um the the report um had been sent to all town and community councils but um what i can um can do if committee would find it useful is um is ensure that this is sent again to all town and community councils and and i think the the purpose of cabinet setting out that the review would be um ongoing until at least the summer of this year is in recognition that actually representations might come in at different times um so certainly it's not a case that um if a representation wasn't received by the end of january it wouldn't be considered so um so that wouldn't be a problem at all um, in terms of the um, History Society membership, no, that hasn't yet been um, been determined. Oh, OK, if I just come back in on that, um, you know, I think it would be disappointing in the way to see if it was just restricted to a History Society, say, from Barry or Penarth, because there are many others throughout the Vale. And, and on this basis, I should I suppose I should declare an interest at this point because I was going to mention that in Clancarvan we have the uh, Clancarvan Society, which functions in a, in in a similar way as a history society, but as well as dealing with current matters within the village. Now I say I declared an interest because I'm the chairman of that society, so um, I think that should be now officially recorded. I've raised that point, and I am the chairman. But I I think again it, it we need to try and look widely in the veil you know even down to some of the small communities who have history that have history societies and i'm sure some of those would sh show an interest in being represented Absolutely, um, Councillor Kemp, and, and I should have um, said in presenting the report that the um, the standing membership of the um, of the panel is set out in the terms of reference. But um, there is also um, 
the provision for the chair to identify um, additional experts um, to make representations or to provide expertise on particular matters. So um, I, th I think the um, the issue that you've just described and, and the support that could be provided by people with very local um, knowledge would certainly fall within that um, that ability for the, the chair to um, to determine. So Cam, do, would you like to comment further? I do no, have a question fine, on that as well. Thank you very much, Gavin, and uh, thank you, Tom. Just before I go on to Councillor Thomas, so regarding, let's say, the local knowledge, so if the representation did come from Village A, for example, would the, the local historian say, I would like to give my expertise and possibly get invited onto the panel? How does, how does that work? Sorry, Tom. No, no, that's fine. And I don't know whether um, Councillor Burnett wanted to come in on, on that particular point, because I saw that um, that she indicated um, to, to speak a moment ago. But um, very much the way that we're initially um, thinking about this operating is that depending upon the nature of the representations received, the panel would um, would convene to to consider those. And if um, if it was sensible or, or useful to engage then with people at a very local level, that's the reason for putting that provision in um, to the terms of reference so that actually um, I, I remember Councillor Burnett describing last month that this is intended to be a very inclusive piece of work um, where we seek um, a range of different views to help um, shape and Form things, but but I don't know if um, if Councillor Burnett wanted to to add anything on that point. Councillor Burnett, if you'd like to comment before we move to Councillor Thomas. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, it, it's exactly as, as Tom said, um, and as I I mentioned last month, this is not a top down um, review at all. This is something that has to be in, informed by local communities themselves. We recognise that some local communities do have. Um, historical society, some have more than one, some don't have any at all. So we will have to work with those communities to um, to to get as much information as we can as as we move forward. The panel is very much advisory um, to, to have um, a, a representative of, of every single historical society in the veil on the panel might make it very unwieldy, but the panel will basically take evidence from anyone that is relevant and we look forward to hearing contributions from all communities in the Vale so that we can find the, the, the correct recommendations to put forward to Cabinet ultimately. OK, thank you, Councillor Burnett. Um, that, now we can move on to Councillor Thomas and then Councillor Birch. Yes, th th thanks very much, Chair. Uh, um, I, actually, my question touches on what Gordon Kemp was asking earlier, and that's basically uh, in terms of the um, TCCs that have been, the Town Community Councils and the other uh, members of the public and so on that have been uh, notified about this, how many to date uh, representations have we had, if any? Thank you. Tom? Uh, yes, to, to date, um, Councillor Thomas, we've had two representations from Town and Community Councils. We haven't um, gone out to um, to invite public representations yet because we wanted to bring this through the political process and um, and get your committee's um, views around the terms of reference. So the plan would be that in the coming weeks we would um, launch that call for evidence um, or representations with the public um, and taking on board Councillor Kemp's um, suggestion earlier, we'll also um, rewrite out to um, town and community councils to invite them to um, to make their representations if they haven't already done so. Thank you both. Councillor Birch, hi there. Uh, well, I just wanted to check that if one of the two representations you'd received have been from Penarth Town Council, because I know we discussed this before Christmas. Yes. Is that correct, Tom? Yeah, it is. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, also in Penarth, we have more than one local history society. So uh, I hope that you would dance very carefully um, in, in approaching them for representation. I'll, I'll put it no higher than that. Absolutely, Councillor Birch. Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, would anyone else like to comment or ask any questions on, on this item? OK, I see it's very quiet here. Only question I have is in terms of um, if there was a particular um, 
item came up in the review panel and there was conflicting views on what to put forward as part of the recommendation. How does that get resolved? Is, the is it like a committee? Does it, get, does it just get both get submitted and then the leader of the council comes up with the final say? How does that work? Sorry. The um Ultimately, the um, the decisions um, as a result of this um, this work will rest with with cabinet. Um, what we've um, included within the terms of reference is that um, all of the meetings will be minuted. Um, we haven't set out um, a sort of minimum um, sort of voting rights and, and those kind of issues because, as Councillor Burnett um, described last month, it is going to be that kind of um, discussion forum around um, issues. And I would anticipate that if there are um, multiple views, which inevitably Inevitably, there will be in, in some instances, the minutes that would be referred to cabinet um, would reflect that and then it would be for cabinet to take a determination um, on the balance of the um, the views that um, that have been presented to them. OK, that sounds great. Um, and then it would, like you say, it would go through the relevant this committee here. And is it just ours and or any? How does that work then? In terms of the um, the review panels work um, holistically, I think absolutely this committee um, needs to be kept up to date because of the equalities um, part of your your remit, and I think it's really important that you you see the the process um, as a whole. Depending upon the nature of any particular recommendations, it may be that those um, recommendations fall within the remit of other scrutiny committees and therefore um, would be reported to those committees as appropriate as well. But with this committee retaining the, the overall steer of the review panel's work. OK, thank you. Does anyone else would like to ask any questions? I believe the only um, item that counts. Hi there, Councillor Perks. Now you can chime in. Thank you. I just um, wondered whether the scope of the committee, um, with the various um, sort of different areas we, we might want to look at, where we would get um, sort of sort of statues from, or perhaps new street names. Whether the committee would be looking at various different areas and already sort of picking out names and things like that for when new builds happen and or how is how is it going to actually work? Is it going to be names put forward by different groups or would you have sort of a a, a list of names for different sort of a, areas? Sorry, I'm not explaining myself very well. I, I think if um, if I've understood correctly, Councillor Perks, um, you're referring to the the proactive nature of the the review work as well, because um, I remember last month we talked about it's important to to review what's already there, but actually um, this is about ensuring that. Um, our our um our area reflects the diversity and celebrates that um, that diversity that maybe exists currently um, and, and is not just about the past. So yes, when representations are being sought, um, it's an important point that people can indicate um, individuals that they feel are worthy of um, commemoration in some way. Um, and and absolutely, the um, the panel would then refer those on to cabinet in in the same way. Um, and yes, I can foresee issues um, or instances is where perhaps um, you would then see that feeding into other established processes around things like street naming, for example, where there are already those kind of processes in place. OK, thank you very much. Um, anyone else? So I believe that the one uh, suggestion is to uh, resend or send out a second batch to all the community and town councils. Is that something we need to amend or is that something that can just be done? Uh, we can list it as a recommendation from the committee, yes. OK, brilliant. OK, great. Um, so we, we're we happy to have that as a recommendation. Yeah. yeah, move the recommendations as amended. And this is an exercise in inclusivity and uh, the, the more we can invite people in, the better, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a good uh, discussion is always good. OK, happy to move. Uh, Councillor Thomas, anyone happy to second? I'm happy to second. OK, Councillor Perks, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor Javi as well. 
the offering. Okay, if we're happy with that, then we can move on to uh, agenda item five, which is any items which the chairman has decided are urgent, and I have none. Um, and that is the same again for agenda item six, which I don't have either. So, Councillor Thomas and Councillor, sorry, Councillor Kemp, I think, and I don't know which one came in first. Council, Council well, I'm quite happy for Councillor Thomas, but the only thing I was going to mention very, very quickly was that we had um, last year a task and finish group looking at the costs of education. Yeah. You know, which, which I sort of introduced and was, was supported. I just wonder whether, I know we're in a different municipal year now, but I wonder whether members will be happy for that to uh, to meet again, because we never finished our work, because we, we got rudely interrupted uh, at the beginning of last year. So I just wonder whether members will be happy for that to um, resume its work. I'm happy for that work to continue. What's um, didn't this come up at the last meeting? And we, and we agreed, yeah, it was at the end, well, yeah. but nothing seems to have happened. Um, I, I would be quite happy to continue to act as, as, as to, to, to chair that, um, if it's possible. Sorry, that's my cat in the background yeah. making a noise. Um, but that's obviously up to members to decide. I know we got Kath, I think, just got the hand up here. Hi. Um, yeah, no, I've got my hand up. Just to clarify, um, it is on the work programme that uh, work for that um, task and finish group recommends is um, it was just a question of the chairmanship. We appreciate the chairmanship of the committee has moved. So I think it's mainly just a question whether um, yourself as chairman and other committee members are happy for um, Councillor Kemp to continue chairing the group. I'm happy for that to continue unless anyone has any not hearing anyone saying no so if there's no yeah. dissent um uh, as as the officer that will be uh, sort of facilitating the group i'll take that as sort of um we can get get to work again with councillor kemp so thank you thank you, gordon and councillor birch um, yes, I had. I asked the officers for an update on the provision of laptops to children and families that needed them. And I know that there are some very up to date statistics on that. So I'd like to be uh, informed of that, if that's possible, please. How do you, I can I can take that one for you. Um, you yeah, no problem. So uh, just to give you an update again, hot off the press because we've had officers uh, receive and, and deploy devices uh, today as well. So we have uh, 3,877 devices which have now been delivered to schools um, to support uh, education and to support our, our pupils. Um, <clears throat> we still have our MiFi devices, which is the broadband connections um, out into uh, families as well. Um, we've um, started working with a bunch of uh, community groups and charities as well in getting additional uh, devices out to, to families um, and those have started to come through, which is really fantastic. Um, and we've got um, some additional laptops which are due to come in uh, the April, May timeframe. So there's let me just get the number here, um, 2,621 that are going to be coming as well uh, in April, May time. So when we bundle that, uh, the devices that have gone out to date, plus the next wave of funding through the hub program, we are well on track on a two to one device ratio for all of our pupils across the Vale, which is um, which is outstanding really. So um, yeah, we're, we're working closely with those schools uh, and, and those families who need that support. OK, thank you very much for that. I mean, I, I knew I knew you were doing good work, but you know, it, it, it's always good to hear the latest uh, up to date information on that. Thank you very much. No problem at all. Excellent. Thank you both. Are we all happy? If so, um, I'm happy to um, end the meeting. Thank you very much for everyone for joining this evening and have a good good night. Bye all. Thank Take you. Good night. Bueno.